Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and today's video is going to show you how I made this little guy. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what this guy is for, but he was just an awful lot of fun to make. And so if you would like to make a little guy too, go ahead and watch the rest of this video. I'll show you the entire process uh, from start to finish. I, I began this little fellow yesterday morning. Um, it's about 10 o'clock this morning, so it was a really fast project. The inspiration for this came from two places. One of them is this video that I've recently watched. It's by Richard Austin from the UK, uh, Sculptive Face. I'll put a link to it down below. This is so much fun. He keeps saying, um, just be brave. Just move the clay around. Be brave. I think it's just so much fun. And you get to watch him in the video take a, a very simple uh, clay face and just just start moving the clay around and, and he turns it in from old to very young and then he does different ethnic groups and stuff. Um, and it's just really cool. It really makes you want to play. And the other piece of inspiration was uh, this is the Giants book. I'll put a link to this too, and I'm just showing you some of these uh, wonderful drawings that are in here. This little guy I made is um, not an attempt to reproduce any of these drawings, but it, just the, the characters in this book are absolutely wonderful, and I wanted to um, make something that was as playful and kind of wild uh, like these guys. I started out basically making a tiny mask form using WED clay. This is a modeling clay. It's, it's based on um, wet clay, pottery clay, and it's got something added to it that uh, keeps it from drying out too quickly, and it uh, feels old. It's, al it's almost like a combination of uh, wet clay and oil-based clay. It's really fun to play with and it's really cheap compared to any form of uh, oil-based uh, modeling clay or super sculpy. So it's my favorite new thing. I'm just making a very basic form here. I'm going to be covering it with plaster cloth and I'm not putting any details on here at all. Uh, this will not be part of the final sculpture. The final sculpture is going to be sculpted entirely of the new air dry clay recipe, uh, just like the dolls in my new book. Now I'm just going to put some eyeballs in those uh, eye sockets. The um, nose, I should mention, I, um, I've just got kind of a placeholder there for the nose right now. As it turned out, I should have made that bigger, and so I ended up uh, changing the mask form later in a way that I should have really done it um, here. Uh, you'll see that in just a few minutes. I'll, sh I'll show you how I uh, went ahead and um, uh, fixed that so that I wouldn't have to have a huge amount of air dry clay to make that huge nose that I gave my wild man. Okay, done messing with it. I'm going to go get myself some plaster cloth. This little guy is not going to take very much plaster cloth. I've got a roll here of six inch plaster cloth which is kind of actually too wide. But it's what I have on hand. A lot of noise here with my cellophane. And I don't need very much. You can just go ahead and get um, plaster cloth down at your local uh, hobby store. Um, it is not expensive. If you want really good stuff, um, I recommend ordering some. I, I get mine from brickintheyard.com. Uh, it's fast setting medical grade, but that's actually um, excessive <laughs> for this project. You don't need anything near so fancy for something like this. So this stuff is nice, but like I said, you don't have to go to the expense of medical grade plaster cloth for this. 
This is cold water I'm putting it in. You always want to use cold water. The edges don't make any difference because we can cut those off just like we do uh, when we're making the um, fascinating paper mache uh, masks. In fact, it's a lot easier to just go ahead and cut it off rather than trying to get a nice even edge. Now obviously I'm going to have to um, wash the plaster off my little tool and off my hands and out of the bowl and I'm sure you know already but I'll say it again don't do that in the sink. Plaster will harden underwater and if it happens to harden at the low part of your plumbing system <laughs> you'll have to replace that plumbing system which is kind of expensive. I'm just trying to get at least two layers on every part of it without making too many layers over those eyeballs because I'm, I'm losing some of the definition around the eyeballs and I'm going to prevent that somehow. I think it's all covered. I'm going to put one more little piece over that second ear. I always try to make sure that I don't have any more um, plaster cloth out than I think I'm going to need because it always ends up getting water on it no matter how careful I am. Usually I'm not careful at all, <laughs> to be honest. And so it always ends up getting a, a couple of spots of water on it, and which of course ruins it. Okay, that's good enough. I'm going to leave it sit here for about 10 minutes. And when I come back, it will be ready for the air dry clay. I'm going to go make some now. I have a video on YouTube and on my blog that shows you how to do that, so I won't won't be showing you how to actually make the air dry clay. There's no point in doing things twice. There we go. Um, I will be back in just a few minutes. Okay, so I've. I let this dry for about um, about 10 minutes. Um, I took the clay out from the inside of it and now I'm just taking my exacto knife and cutting around that edge um, just, uh, just to clean it up a little bit. The plaster cloth has not cured. It's not hard. I mean it's stiffened but it isn't its final hardness so it's really easy to cut at this point. So here's our little tiny, basically a mask form. He's all ready to go. I'll go get my my board again, so they'll have something to work on. While I was waiting for the plaster cloth to harden, I made up a batch of the air dry clay. Like I said, you, you can find the recipe for this out on the YouTube channel or at ultimatepapermache.com. Just do a search for it. Now for this first part, I'm just going to do just like I did when I made the little doll heads. Um, I'm just going to add a really, really thin layer of the air dry clay over the plaster cloth. And I think I'm going to wrap this around that edge just so that I have a nice smooth edge. You can thin this out just by putting a, a small amount of the air dry clay on your plaster cloth and just keep moving it and pushing it and moving it and that way you end up with a really thin layer. Now I did use the household bleach, just about a, a half a teaspoon of it, when I was mixing or when I was soaking the paper. Um, it's been really, really wet here in South Dakota. Before I moved here, I thought this was a dry state. I, I guess I had watched too many of those news programs about the drought last year. So I really thought it was a dry state. I was wrong. <laughs> it's actually very humid here, or at least it has been this year. And so mold has uh, been a problem. The um, bleach that was added should stop this uh, 
from developing mold at least long enough for it to dry. Once it's dry then and sealed, then there's no problem. You do need to make sure, like on this area where I just put a, a new piece over the old piece that's had time to stiffen up just a little bit, you have to be really careful to mix the edges of the, the old one and the new one really well. Or, or when the, um, if you don't, the, the clay will shrink just a little bit when it dries and it was, will pull apart right at the connecting joint. This should not do that. It's really easy to fix it if it does do that. But it's a lot easier overall if you can manage to avoid it. Now if I was making something that I wanted to look nice and smooth and elegant and porcelain-like, I would probably at this point rub on some of the glue and water mixture. Just very, just put enough on there so that it um, makes your fingers slide easily over the clay. And I would smooth this off. But because this is a wild man and I kind of want him to look a little bit you know, uncivilized. I don't think I'm going to do that. I will make myself some of the some of the um, the glue and water mixture, but I don't think I'm going to use it to smooth this guy off. So I'm going to go ahead and I've got this. This is done as I want it to for the uh, initial layer. I'm going to go put it out in the sun now and leave it maybe for an hour or so. And then I'll come back and um, finish up the, the face. Okay, I just brought the little guy in. He's stiffened up a lot. He's not dry all the way through, obviously. It's only been about an hour, really. Um, but it's stiff enough that I can work on it without messing up the skin that's there. So I'm going to go ahead and, and work some more on him. Um, <clears throat> I've been looking at my little guy, and he doesn't look very wild. <laughs> so I'm going to do a few things to him um, that I probably should have done when I was making the original clay um, form. Um, first of all, I've decided after looking in my giant's book that he needs a really big nose. And if I make his nose really big out of the air dry clay, it's going to take forever for that clay to dry. So what I'm going to do like I said, it's what I probably should have done in the in the first place. Uh, I, I could have uh, made a bigger nose with, with the uh, WED clay. Uh, since I didn't do that, I could have made a bigger nose using the plaster cloth, and I didn't do that. But I'm going to go ahead and use plaster cloth now, and just put it right on top of that clay. It's hard enough now; it should have no problems. Uh, <coughs> working. Let's see, I don't know how much I need. Just get that wet. want to let it drip a bit so it's not too wet. And then I'm just going to swish it up. Now this is a wild man so he should have a, a really big nose I've decided. I'm not going to bother with nostrils at this point because they can do that easily with clay. But I want that big bulbous nose. His cheeks aren't actually big enough. That's something again that I should have done. Should have taken care of with the clay. The the initial clay that I used for the form, not the air dry clay. I'm going to go ahead and give him some bigger cheeks right now. I'm just going to leave this for about 10 minutes and then we're ready for our final sculpting. I thought I was ready already but I decided I wasn't. I'm 
going to just pull out the excess plaster. Okay, now I leave it alone. And I'll be back in about 10 minutes. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes and that's plenty hard enough. Now I need to cover it up like I did before because it's going to be the, the little pieces are, are also going to be hopefully attached to the uh, original clay. I'm adding this um, this stuff. It's just Elmer's glue um, thinned with about half and half water and glue. If you use the original paper mache clay recipe for this instead of the air dry clay, you don't need the glue. I want a really, really thin skin over that nose so he doesn't get too big of a nose on him. I am dampening my tool with the um, with the glue and water mixture so that it'll slide over the clay instead of grabbing onto it. I don't actually want it over the eyeball. I'm using that glue mixture again um, to make sure that the two pieces of new clay stick together really well. And it's also allowing me to squish it down so that there's no seam line. And it looks sort of symmetrical. Probably got into a lot of fights in this life, but I don't want to have too crooked of a nose. And his nose is too square on the front. I do need to start thinking about making my Halloween mask video. If anyone has any ideas for what kind of mask they would like to see for this Halloween, please let me know. Okay, I think we got a nice nose here. This is 
some have teeth sticking out. You need to do the teeth first. And we'll have to let it dry. And I've decided that yes, I want him to have teeth. But not very many. His mouth is going to go right here. probably noticed that I've been putting too much uh, glue on there. So I'm going to get out my paper towel and get rid of some of that. Kind of a tired wild man. The big bags under his eyes.
I need to build up those eyebrow bones again. They seem to have gotten lost somehow. I think I'll make really bushy eyebrows and play around with my garlic press if I can find them. I don't know where I put it. I better work on his ears just a little bit. They're really big ears. Okay, these ears are completely asymmetrical. I think I'm going to let that be okay. Maybe hide them behind some beard or something. Or mustache. I don't know. We'll think. We'll think of something. Now, I think we've got... Those are stiff enough now. If I'm really careful, I don't think I'll mess them up. I'm putting a lot of the glue on there because I want a real nice wide mouth. And I want it to be somewhat um, spontaneously bumpy if that makes any sense at all.
There's some wrinkles right there that just happened. I'm going to leave them. I think they're cool. Could give them a real chin, but I kind of like this. And I got it too wet because I had, it, I had uh, glue on my fingers. And then it needs the muscle that goes from the top of the nostril down around the mouth. little bit of clay here to fill out those cheeks. One more muscle. By the way, I should mention that um, if you're actually interested in, in knowing how to sculpt a real head <laughs> so that it looks like a real person, uh, you might want to check out David Lemon's new video. He does some fantastic videos on YouTube, and I know that his, his full-length video has got to be great. I haven't ordered mine yet, but I'm going to hopefully next week. He does amazing work. It looks absolutely nothing like this. <laughs> Oops. I did find my garlic press. This is something you would not want to do if you actually use your garlic press for garlic. <laughs> <laughs> 
because <laughs> you can see it's almost impossible to clean it out. Just going to keep adding a little bit more and a little bit more until I have enough for some rather bushy eyebrows. sure it's how to get just one eyebrow off at a time. I think it's gonna work. Haha. What I wanted to, I actually I bought the um, garlic press because I wanted to do this with a Scotty dog, and I couldn't get it to work. I you know, to, to look halfway realistic, but I'm not trying to make this guy look realistic, so I think I'm keeping it. It's starting to remind me of some of the uh, cartoon drawings of medieval monks. I'm changing the ears. I don't like the ear hair. So I'm going to make a sideburns instead. He's kind of fun. For a fast face, this has only taken me a couple of hours. I'm going to go put him outside in the sun. He'll stay out there um, for at least 24 hours, maybe more, because we do have a lot of clay on here. That's this pretty thick uh, clay. So um, I will finish this up when this is dry, and I'll go ahead and paint him. That'll be fun. Left a guy out. Now I left him outside in the sun for about four hours. It's not anywhere close to done. Uh, it's not dry. It's quite. There's actually a lot of clay on here, so it's probably going to take two days to dry. I was hoping one, but taking longer. But I do see some things that I want to fix. Um, like right here, when I was adding his sideburns, I wasn't very careful. I want to fix it right here. 
So I'm going to show you how easy that is to do. I'm going to go ahead and fix it now and then uh, just let it dry. Now this piece right here um, is separated because I didn't do a very good job of attaching it. I, I did attach it very nicely on this side, but on this one, no. Now in some of these areas where uh, two pieces decide to pull apart, I'm actually going to leave it um, because if it's like like this one, there's one up here, I don't know if you can see. Um, it actually looks like a, a a wrinkle. So I'm going to leave it. But this one looks like a ball stuck on the end of his nose. Doesn't seem very appropriate. Now what I did was I just put um, some of the glue and water on there to make sure that the new stuff would stick. I put a tiny little piece of clay on there and just squished it out so that uh, there's no seam anymore. That's all we're really doing is covering up that seam. While you weren't looking, I changed his teeth. I didn't like the two teeth I had on the bottom didn't actually look like teeth. It, it looked like he had two tongues or something. <laughs> it wasn't working. So I noticed it when I was outside, didn't have the camera with me, so I just went ahead and fixed it. And now I'm going to go ahead and put it back outside. And when he's dry, I'll come back and finish him. Well, I left uh, my little guy overnight. Um, it wasn't dry when I got up this morning because I, you know, I really needed a couple more days and I just couldn't stand it. I wanted to play with him some more. So I threw him in the oven at about 350 degrees for maybe 45 minutes. Not something I recommend because um, baking Elmer's glue does not smell very good. Um, but I went ahead and did it anyway and it certainly didn't seem to hurt it any. It's dry now. So what I'm going to do keep waving it around so you probably can't see it. Um, it's got a lot of variation in color. Um, when I made the doll heads, of course, I recommended that you use a white gesso so that the paint that you put on it would have a nice bright uh, color. It's always, um, your color is always going to be brighter if you paint over white. Um, this guy, though, I like the variation in color because I want somebody to look kind of, looks kind of old and, and wild. Um, I decided to give him some kind of watery blue eyes. And now that the, um, the eye color is dry, that didn't take very long actually, I'm going to spray it with this uh, new varnish that I got from Sculpt Nouveau Smart Coat. Um, it's supposed to be totally green. It says completely green, so let's let's believe him. And I think I'm going to brush that out. Um, I don't recommend that you run out and buy any of that just because I'm using it. Don't don't think that you should go get some. It was actually. Um, uh, designed for use with the Sculpt Nouveau metal services. Um, it just happens to be the only matte uh, varnish that I have in the house. And um, I, I didn't want my little guy to get shiny, so th that was the purpose of it. Okay, so I'm going to leave him for about 25 minutes and let him dry. Okay, let him dry. And now what I've done is I've mixed up some burnt umber, some golden acrylic glazing liquid in this little cup and I'm going to um, use this as a glaze and I'm going to wipe it off. I, I tested it already to make sure it works. Um, it did get sealed with that varnish. I realize it would have been easier to spray it with just with some Krylon uh, clear coat. <laughs> I have some, but I forgot about it. So anyway, um, this is just a shop towel. I've got it wet on one end to make sure that I can get it off. Um, 
I've got a little piece here in my in my bucket or my in my cup that is darker, has less of the glazing liquid. It's almost pure burnt umber. I'm just going to use that on the deeper parts. And now I'll use the, um, the lighter color that I just mix all this in with the rest of the glazing liquid so I have a nice light glaze. I want him to look kind of suntanned, like he's been out, out in the sun too long. For too many years probably. So let's just see how this works. Put it on the bottom here first, just to kind of test it. Okay, I'm going to see if I can even this out so that I don't have to wipe it off. I don't, I don't actually like it as uh, as light as it came out when I when I wiped it off. So I'm going to just keep moving it. The um, glazing liquid keeps the acrylic paint from drying so quickly. That's one of the reasons why it works really nice for glazing. So you can you can play with it a little bit more than you could if you were just using a um, acrylic paint thinned with water. It's just going to naturally sink into those deeper portions. I want the hairy bits again talking around my brush and my mouth. I want the hairy bits to be lighter. I'll go ahead and finish him up. You don't need to watch me do this entire thing. A little bit like watching paint dry. And I'll be back as soon as it's uh, it's all done. Okay, I got that done. Looks a little strange. That's okay. Now what I should do is wait until this dries, which um, actually when, when you use the glazing liquid it takes almost 24 hours to fully cure. And I should wait before um, doing the pupils, but I'm not going to. See if I can get them halfway around. I should use a smaller brush, but I can't seem to find one. <laughs> I need to go to the store. There. Now I can't varnish this until um, until, like I said, the uh, the glazing liquid dries. But he is essentially done. No point in them whatsoever, but <laughs> it was a lot of fun to make. So there you have it, um, the making of a little wild man. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, be sure to come visit me at ultimatepapermache.com and show off your work. We would love to see what you've been up to. And also make sure that you come and see the recent guest posts that we've got on our blog. A lot of the uh, tutorials don't end up on video, so if you're only watching um, and, and, and following along on YouTube, you're going to be missing some really incredible things that some guest posters have put up lately. Uh, I don't want you to miss those because they're really nice. So come visit us, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.